Well, good morning. I'm surprised a fellow from Texas thinks it's all that hot here in Nebraska. <laughs> but uh, thank you all for coming out today. This is a critical time uh, in the history of our nation. Our country is going in the wrong direction. Some say the solution is more government and higher taxes. My friends, as Ronald Reagan said, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. And today, more specifically, it is the federal government that is our problem. It's a government of nationalized health care. It's a government of oppressive new regulations. It's a government of trillion dollar deficits. It's a government of higher taxes. It's a government of class warfare. It's a government that funds abortions and tramples on religious freedom. It's a government that blocks our domestic energy development. It's a government that refuses to secure our borders. It's a government that has failed America. But in 2012, we can change that government. In fact, I believe that 2012 will be a great year for freedom and for the future of our country. We need a new direction. We need to restore America. And restoring America must begin with defending our freedom. Our founding fathers understood that big government threatens our freedom. And the source of our freedom is not a benevolent government. As our, no, our freedom is not a gift of the government. As Thomas Jefferson said, the God who gave us life gave us liberty at the same time. The Declaration of Independence tells us that the source of our freedom is our Creator. The Declaration of Independence says this, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Today, these God-given rights are under assault. In this time and in this place, it is for us to come to the defense of these fundamental rights. It is a duty imposed on us by our forefathers. It is a responsibility that we have to our children so that they may know and enjoy the blessings of liberty that we have known. In 2000, I was proud to stand before the Supreme Court of the United States and defend Nebraska's ban on partial birth abortions. Thank you. Two years ago, I was, I was deeply disappointed when Congress voted to allow our tax dollars to be used to pay for abortions. It's morally wrong to use tax dollars for abortions. More recently, we have witnessed President Barack Obama's war on religion. He took federal funding away from religious organizations that have fought against sexual trafficking of women because those organizations oppose abortion on religious grounds. And even more re recently, the Obama war on religion has attacked the rights of conscience protected by the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. In doing, they, and they did that by requiring Catholic hospitals and universities to provide insurance company coverage for birth control, sterilization, and some abortion drugs. We must put an end to this war on religion. If we value our religious freedom, we must do that. Over 53 million children have been killed by abortionists in the United States since Roe versus Wade was decided. But I firmly believe that this carnage will not continue forever. I, fir I firmly believe that a just God will not forever allow his innocent children to be slaughtered. And I look forward to the day when the Supreme Court of the United States will say that our Constitution, which was lit written to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, does not authorize the killing of the very posterity it was written to protect. Until recent days, marriage in the United States and throughout the Western world has been understood to be the union of a man and a woman. The nuclear family has been the building block of civilization through the ages. It is an institution that is used to care for and socialize the children of each succeeding generation. There are those now who wish to dramatically revise the institution of marriage. These efforts should be opposed. 
We need an amendment to the Constitution of the United States that will define marriage as the union of one man and one woman for all purposes of federal and state law. We must repeal Obamacare, the nationalization The nationalization of health insurance will be a disaster for our nation, both financially and, and in the way that it takes away the individual right to deal with their doctor and their own medical care instead of being dictated to by a bureaucrat in Washington. We must cut federal spending. We cannot continue to run up trillion dollar deficits and we need an amendment to the Constitution of the United States that requires a balanced budget. We must develop our domestic energy resources. For too long, we have allowed radical environmentalists to block domestic energy development. It's time to get them out of the way and move forward with energy security for our nation. And we must secure our borders because our national security demands it. And finally, we must stand firm in defense of the Second Amendment, life and religious freedom. And what do we need to do to restore America's greatness? I believe that it begins with faith. The Bible tells us what is needed to restore a nation. It is written in 2 Chronicles, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Restoring our nation must begin with earnest prayer. When you go home tonight, Pray for our country. Pray that God will heal our land. But it is not enough to pray. Every story in the Bible except creation involved men and women inspired by God who did what they were called to do. So what, in addition to prayer, can we do to restore our country? Number one, vote. And you know, some people tell me, you know, I only have one vote. It doesn't really matter that much. Well, that's all the votes any of us have. Uh, we have one, and we need to use it, to use it wisely. Let me tell you a couple of uh, historical things in Nebraska. In 1990, in the Democratic race for governor in the primary, the winner won by less than 50 votes. And he went on to serve two terms as governor and two terms in the United States Senate. That's what less than 50 votes led to. And on my own first uh, winning primary for attorney general in 1990, I won that one by less than one vote per precinct. So your vote is very important and your neighbors too. So number two, talk to your friends and neighbors and get them to vote. And number three, help the candidates who are courageous and who share your values, your hopes and your dreams for America's future. If we believe in, if we believe in freedom, if we believe in America, and I know that you do. Then let us go forward boldly, with courage, asking for God's help, loving freedom, remembering those who gave their lives for our freedom, loving our country, and changing our government. So that our posterity will say of us that when the challenge came, we had the courage to defend our freedom and restore our nation. May God bless you, and may, be, may he be with each of us as we work together to restore America. Thank you.